it is Carl Brown from Guitar Lessons 365.com. Today we have a solo that I said I would never do because it's an impossible solo. But you know what? You know what? Let's just do it anyway. You know? Who cares? Let's just do it. So we're going to do both of the solo breaks for Heartbreaker uh, by the great Led Zeppelin and uh, Jimmy Page. I don't know what was going on with him that day, but maybe too much caffeine or uh, I don't know, whatever else he was taking. Um, this one's crazy. I, as you can tell by listening to it, impossible to get it exactly note for note. It's just not a, it's, he'll never do it the same way. It's just, it's just kind of one of these off the cuff things. But um, I think we've gotten pretty close to it here. So hopefully you'll, um, you'll be able to make it sound, you know, fool your friends at least. All right. Um, so uh, before I do that, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and ring that little notification bell so you know when I re whenever I release a new lesson video. Uh, which happens a lot, and uh, please check out my new merchandise store. The link is in the description too. A lot of cool designs that uh, you can only get in my merch store that me and my uh, brother have come up with. They're really cool. A lot of them are pretty funny. Um, new ones going all the time, so please check that out. You'll see that link in the, in the description. And check out my Guitar Academy at guitarlessons365.com. All my guitar courses there, really cool stuff. All right, so let's start breaking down this monster. Um, now the tuning here is technically standard tuning, um, but this little unaccompanied lead break, the first one, that, the one that I just played through, it is um, tuned a little bit higher in pitch. They might have just sped the tape up a little bit, but it's a little bit more than a quarter of a step sharp. So if you try to play along with the recording, it's going to sound out of tune, unless you can... Uh, if you have a tuner that can, you can adjust how many cents of the pitch, um, you go to standard tuning and then raise it 60 cents. And you'll be in tune with the, at least the unaccompanied one. But then when the band comes back in for the second lead break, you're back in regular standard tuning. So uh, just uh, be forewarned. Oh, well, actually, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it is the same tuning, but uh, you'll get away with it either way. So just do whatever you want to do. Let's now start here with this opening lick. <laughs> Now, I have practiced that little section for about two minutes and already pretty much worn a hole in my thumb. So, a um, little, little warning, it can be hazardous for your health to do that a lot. So, uh, let's go through this. Now, this lick right here... So you just basically start a second fret on the G, hammer on five, pull back off to two, pull off to the open string. Then you're gonna pick two on the D string, and pull off to the open D, over to three on the A string. All right, so he does that lick twice, but he times it different the second time. So he just goes like this. And then the second time is like, it kind of, this is quicker on the top. And there's a slight little pause on that open G. And then it keeps it. So the pause is on the first note the first time through. And then on the open G the second time. All right. And then we start the lick again. But when you start it now, go up and pull back off of the open string, but just then hammer back on five, pull off the two, zero. So you do that a few times. You do that uh, six or seven times, I guess. And, and then we do the bends behind the nut. So what he is doing is taking his thumb, and you're going to have this uh, on the, the G string behind the nut there. So while you're doing this, reach over, and then when you come down on like, a few times after you've done this a few times, you hold the fifth fret. You hold the fifth fret for a second and you push down with your thumb that G string and it does not feel good, not to me at least. So we we'll... So you do that, release, do the pull off again, all the way down to the open string, then back to that five. So you do that, I don't know, five or six times, I guess. I didn't really count. So when I'm coming down to the five, I'm pressing the thumb down. Then he holds it, and then slowly releases it. I'm gonna stop doing that now because my thumb is killing me. 
All right, and then we have really kind of the meat of the solo. I'll stop there right before the fast licks start. So we have uh, kind of like it's kind of a staccato feel here. So that's just the seventh fret on the D, fifth on the G, and then a couple of bends. Whole set bends at the seventh fret on the G. All right, and then you're going to pretty much do the same thing again. So you're going to release that second bend and pull off to the fifth fret real quick. So we have this. That's the first time. And then you see he's quickly killing the notes, so it's kind of just gotta give it that attitude, and it'll work. And then the third time we start kind of the same, but he goes into a pre-bend here, a pre-bend. You're gonna pre-bend that seventh fret on the G, release, and bend it a few times and release. Uh, so the fourth time when you're doing the bend. You're gonna pick it and release that bend, and then go back to the pull off to the five over to seven on the D. So we have this so far. All right, and now we're gonna do a couple of what are those things? Kind of a basic blues like here, which is a quick. You're gonna pick the seventh fret, and do a quick bend and release. Off to five, over to seven on the D. So do that twice. So we have this coming out of the. Then, and then we're gonna end this little part right before the, the with two, uh, five seven on the G, and then we go into these uh, fast licks. Now the fast licks sound a bit erratic. I, I you know, you everybody part that everybody kind of talks about. And it's, it's, you could tell he's, he's playing a pattern there that he's trying to, to repeat um, um, and just kind of going for it. Um, and so you, could, you could hear the pattern that he's doing. Um, so there's two patterns there. So the first one is you're going to bend the seventh fret there on the G string, then play five, which is going to be the same note. So it sounds like he doubles that note, but it's because he bends into it. And then you're going to pull off 8 to 5 on the uh, B string. So it's a 4 note lick, really. And he does it about 5 times. And then he goes into the next lift. So, by going 5, 7 on the B string, and then we get into the top lick. So if you go, you go 5, 7 on the B to um, 5 on the high E, we start the next lick. You can see this lick a few times in the salt. So what's that is going 8 to 5 on the um, high E, then seven to five, over seven on the B, then the back to five on the high E. So coming out of that, I'll do I'll slow these down a bit. So you, you can pick each note. Or you can do some pull-offs. Pull off the notes on the high E string. Whatever's comfortable. Um, and then, so from there, he kind of takes the same. He, he takes that same lick, sliding into the 10th fret there on the B string, over to eight on the high E string. So you're gonna do that same lick. Instead of going like that, he goes, 8 on the B string. Now, uh, when I go back to this previous lick before, I 
think one of those, he actually does seven five on the B there too, instead of going seven, then back to the five on the high E. It might be the, the maybe the second time he plays it, so I, I'm remembering it as, as I'm doing this right now. So. Like that, so like, you heard me do that seven five on the B instead of going to the five on the high E. So. Then the slide up. Like that. And then we start getting to this really kind of disjointed part. If you listen to it very slow. So it's a quick, quick little chromatic lick. Nine, seven, nine, eight, seven on the G. Actually, before I do that, let me play it. All right, so we're getting to these, these licks that kind of really move around really quick down here. And once again, when you hear them playing, it's, it's um, even if you slow it down, it's extremely difficult to kind of really pick up what's going on there. Um, so we have this 987 on the G, then 57 on the G, then 45. So that's coming out of this one. All right, now from, uh, I kind of take this as being its own section right here. Let me play through it from this note. All right, so that obviously is very erratic. So we're gonna play, uh, we're gonna pull off five to four, and then uh, seven, five, four on the uh, D string. Over to seven on the A. Back to four, five on the D. And back to four on the G string. So we have this. All right, so then you can do that pull off again, five to four. To the A, uh, A notes, the seventh fret on the D string. And the open A string. So let's use, let's use that open A as just kind of like a stopping point. So we have this. All right, so from there, that open A, we have this. So we have this. Um, this is uh, five four on the D, and then you're gonna do a quick little hammer pull from that four back to the five, pull off the four, over to seven on the A, back to that four on the D, open A. So those two together. of it we have so this is got a quick little kind of three quick notes there when you start slowing down so we have this little three four three on the a string and then five on the a three The next section, crazy again, um, it looks like this. All right, so um, this is going to start with the open A string. All right, so it's it's kind of like a, a co common blues licks, but played really fast, and um, I, I really don't know how to describe it. Anyway, so we're gonna have, uh, you're not, the picking doesn't line up exactly with the notes that are going on in the left hand here. So it's like, he's like, when he's doing this, he's just kind of like picking as fast as he can, and he's laying his fingers across, him, but they don't sync up all the time. So you can, it's very easy to hear, uh, and it's quite obvious when you're listening to it, but. So we have, you have the A to, you're gonna kind of slide from three to four real quick on the A string. 
And then you're going to play uh, two, three, four on the D. Over to two on the G, slide up to five, and hammer on to six. So we had this. Um, then roll to the fifth fret on the B, and uh, fifth fret on the high E string. So we had, let's just see if we can get all the way up there. So when you're picking that, pick it however you want to, just go with us. All right. Um, so anyway, then after we get to this top note, we're going to have this. So this is a little bit easier to memorize if you, if you can just kind of work it out. So we're going to, it's very standard blues kind of stuff. Um, so we have pulling off 8 to 5 on the B, 7 on the G, back to 5 on the B. So that's the first little lick you can mem memorize. Next lick, three notes. You're going to pull off 8, 7, 5 on the G string. So we have... Then you're going to pull off 7 to 5 again on the G. But then treat it as kind of the beginning of a, uh, a descending lick that goes all the way down through the pentatonic scale. From 7 to 5 on the D, back to down to 7 on the A, and then you're going to come back up. All the way to that 5 on the G. So we have this starting from that 8th fret there on the B. I'm sorry, actually on that D string, I think on the way up, we have five, six, seven. Uh, we don't we don't play straight pentatonic. There's a lot of notes here I gotta keep track of. Yeah, five, six, seven, up to that five on the G. So there, where we have it. So start from down here. All right, so from here, we kind of just play 5, 7, and then we hammer it. Back to 5, over to 7 on D. And then back to that 5. So this is all happening, obviously, extremely fast. So it, you're really just going to have to memorize it a little section and get it worked in your hands and then start t tying them together if you want to get close to it. So then we have a lick that we, uh, we did earlier. That bend to the fifth fret there on the B, pull, bend on the seventh fret there on the, on the G, to that fifth fret on the B, pull off eight to five on the B, back to that seven on the G and the five on the B. So that comes after we get back. And we're almost done here. We with this. This is probably the hardest section to, to memorize. And then we have that pull off eight seven five again on the G. And then once again seven five. Then you're gonna pick that and then hammer on six. And actually, you don't need to hammer on. Just pick it twice on the G. Then. Five on the uh, B once, and then twice on the high E, fifth fret, over to uh, G, the G note, the, the eighth fret on the B string. So, and then at the end of the unaccompanied section looks like this. Alright, so that's a quick little open A string with a muted uh, A string. And then um, I just picked the bottom note. We have uh, uh, some sixths. <laughs> it's always hard to say. Uh, so the ninth fret on the D and uh, ninth fret on the B. So I'm playing the bottom note with a pick and then using my middle finger to get that note on the B string. 
And you play this kind of staccato too. So we have it 9 and 9. Then play the same two strings as a D and the B, but move it down here to the 7th fret for both of them. And then the 6th fret on the D, 5th fret on the uh, B string. And then you just take that down chromatically, one fret, and then one more fret. Let them ring together. So with this. A little bit of feedback comes in, and he slides it down there. Um, and that's uh, the end of the unaccompanied part, the solo break and heartbreaker. Now the band comes in. Um, so I'm going to play through this second solo break, which we actually have with the band. Um, and then I'll show you that one phrase by phrase. So here we go. <laughs> So that one's pretty crazy too. Um, at least we have a band to follow along with though. So um, we can hide all of our mistakes. <laughs> so we're gonna start out here with just the bridge pickup. Um, and we have this little, now I will say that this section has a lot of overdubs in it. Um, especially you'll see these chords that I'm playing at the beginning. When you see him play them live, uh, I'll, I'll point out kind of where he really plays it live uh, because there's another guitar that's on the recording that's kind of overdubbed um, and, and for some of those more kind of power chords. Um, but so what I'm doing is trying to put both of them together. Um, but it's not really the way that he does it live. I'll kind of show more what he does it live too. All right, so let's start here with this, these part. Now you can let the A ring out the entire time there. I like the sound of it. And a lot of times he'll do that live, or you can just play the, when you get to the sixth, play them by themselves. But I like to have the A ringing because it keeps going um, anyway in a song. So we start with an A major chord. And then uh, the sixth here, which is the fourth fret there on the D and the third fret on the G. I'm sorry, uh, third fret on the B string. You're gonna mute the G. Uh, with your uh, the bottom of your um, middle finger there. So I like to have the A string, open A string with it. And then move this up to the fifth fret on the D string, and then play the fifth fret there with your ring finger on the B string. Then you pick that again, slide that up two frets, back down to five, and then back down to the first sixth shape of the with this. Now here, when we get to this part, live, he usually does something like this. Or he might even do this. So live, it looks like he, he does uh, these chords up here. And you can hear this note as well in the chord. So it almost sounds like he's doing it like this. And underneath that, we have... But we can take those exact notes that he did, which was the bar here at the 5th fret on the D and the G, with the 8th fret there on the B string, and then you can play the E note there that's at the 7th fret on the A. Play that and move it up. 
You can add the A to those same chords, but you have to do it down here. So you're getting all the notes now, but you're going to be playing it in a different part of the fretboard than he would um, if you just want to recreate more of the sound of the album. So we have the, um, I'll show you what these chords are down here. Open A, second fret on the D, open G, uh, first fret on the uh, B, and then the third fret on the high E. Full chord. And then we're going to keep the open A, but then we're going to play this uh, fourth fret on the D, second fret on the G, third fret on the B, fifth fret on the um, um, high E string, so it's going to recreate that chord for him. But now we have the open A in the bass. So we do that a couple times. Just one big hit, hit, and back and forth. And then he launches into a solo, and he's going to throw it kind of up, up, up on the neck pickup here. And the first phrase looks like this. All right, you got that? Let's move on. <laughs> no, just kidding. Anyway, so we have the open A. This is another one of those that he's got a lot of notes going on here, and he's just kind of picking across it as fast as he can. Um, and some of the notes uh, will be hit well, and some of them not so much. So, But the notes he's going for here is the open A. It likes to slide into from that seven, uh, that three to four, like we did earlier, and that same two, two, three, four on the D. Get to that second fret of the G. We've seen this before in the first solo, first solo break. Slide up to five and play six, seven. So like this. Then five, seven on the B. Slide up to the tenth fret. And that's when you can start taking a breath. So we have this. So that lick is sounds pretty cool when you get it all, but it it's really just sounds like a crazy uh, line of notes when you hear it on the recording. But so that's a good way of kind of tackling it. If you can get it precise, it sounds really cool. All right, then when we get up top. All right, so this is pretty cool right here. We, we do eight, nine, 10, nine, 10. Okay, so you went back 10, nine, 10, nine a couple times. And then into some big bends there on the, at the 10th fret there on the high E. And then we're gonna do that chromatic lick again, eight, nine, 10 on the high E. And then you play eight, nine again, but instead now when you play 10 over on the B string with a big bend. So kind of a step and a half uh, bend too. So it's a release that, pull off to eight, over to nine on the G, back to that eight. So from here. So then the next, this is now coming up to my, my favorite part of e either of these solo breaks. And it looks like this. I'll, I'll kind of stop there. So we're going to slide into 11 on the G, 10 on the B. Huge bend there, the 12th fret on the high E string, and you're gonna be kind of release, like picking it with the bend, and then without the bend, and then back up. But so it kind of really give it, and then you release that bend, pull off to 10, over to 13 on the B, and back to that 10 on the high E string. So that kind of ends that little lick right there. 
And then we have some repeated licks that start that are really cool. There's two sections of repeated licks here. The first one is this. So you're going to play it four times. You're going to pick that 13 twice. You can use these fingers. That's just pick 13 twice, pull off to 10 on the B, over to um, 12 on the G string. So we have the. So you do it four times. And then we have this lick come, that comes in. Done four times. Now that one is, you're gonna play 13 again, pull off to 10, and then play 12 and pull off to 10. And then, since this is a sixth note lick right here, we're gonna play the 11th fret on the G, and then to the 10th fret on the B. So that's the sixth notes of that lick. And you just repeat that four times. So from the previous lick, so up to speed. All right, so then we go into uh, these bends at the 13th fret. I'll, I'll show you the phrase. These bends are uh, two whole step bends. So they're huge. So that's uh, like he's doing these bends. He'll, he'll really bend way up there and just kind of release it like a whole step and then bring it back up to two whole steps. So it's, it's quite, quite an effort to do. Got to get all the way up there to that note. Release uh, the bend, over to, pull off to 10, over to 12 on the G, and play 13, 10 on the B. So you do basically that twice. All right, so don't worry, don't practice that too much. I mean, just little spurts because you can really tear up your fingertips real quick. All right, now this next section is really kind of, um, I'm, I'm going, I'm kind of grabbing a little part that's the, the highest in the mix, which is a, a little rhythm guitar part that's kind of going on in the back because there's a lot of layers here. Uh, but I picked up this one, which I think is the is the most apparent in the mix, uh, because there's not really a definitive part of the solo licks going on here. It looks like this. All right, so um, that's a quick little bend there at the seventh fret there on the G to the fifth fret there on the B, and then you're gonna go into these. It's really cool. You're gonna have the open A string with all of these, and we're gonna play the seventh fret on the D, and then the sixth fret on the G. So play that with the open A, then move that down two frets, then back up two frets. Enjoy this. Then we're gonna go all the way up here to the eleventh fret on the D, and the ninth fret on the G. Still with that open A. Then back down to that seven and six, and then two press down from that. So it's just. All right, now we get to the end of the solo, uh, which kind of looks like this. All right, so that's coming out of those. You're going to grab the 5th fret real quick on the um, high E string. Once again, this part's really kind of hard to hear. And then you kind of jump into the 10th fret there on the B. Same note. And then do some of those big bends. What we did before, release it. Pull off to 8, over to 9 on the G, back to the A on the B. We did that before. And then just go into some double stops here. 
So that's the ninth fret on the G, then the eighth fret on the B. Now I have seen him live, not, he doesn't try to really recreate this solo too much live, he just kind of improvises. Maybe you'll see a couple of little things out of it here or there. He'll sometimes do that with an oblique pin. So if you want to do that, just in case you feel like you haven't done enough bends, which I don't think you will think that way, but you can do more. So if you want to do it like that, it's the eighth fret on the B, and then you're going to bend off the seventh fret on the uh, G string. And pick those two strings, or you can just get the same notes without the bend, but just playing the ninth fret on the G, and along with the eighth on the B. Some vibrato on it. And they've got this ending lick. And that's 1412 on the high E string over to 13 on the B. So it's a three note lick that's just repeated. And then we get to the end of this mighty solo. And that's a oblique bend there. You're gonna play the 15th fret on the B string, bend it up a whole step, and then grab the 15th fret on the high E string while you're doing that bend, and then just strum those two strings together. So and then I slide it down. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this in-depth look at the Impossible Solo. It's kind of known as the Impossible Solo just because of just how it's played and just how it's, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's really hard to recreate, but I think we've gotten pretty close here and I hope you guys um, enjoyed it and your fingers don't hate me too much for this, um, but I'm glad we finally got to it. It is probably one of the most legendary guitar solos ever performed. So it's about time that I got to it, I guess. All right, I'll see you guys again soon for guitarlessons365.com.